Hey guys, what's up? It's Lizzie Jane and we are back today with another episode live from our Regenerate series that we recorded in early June. Regenerate is the largest house and techno festival that happens in Denver, Colorado annually. It was very awesome to be able to sit down with so many artists throughout day one of the festival. We are airing our conversation today with the one and only Namino. He started DJing and producing at the age of 16. He has a wide array of music. His discography really ranges between house music, hip hop, and garage, and making beats really for the dance floor. His music has taken off extremely well on TikTok over the past few years. He is now gone from playing a wide array of music festivals overseas to coming stateside. It was lovely to be able to catch his set. He has an awesome live set with an Ableton push pad. We talk about his setup and more curating sets for the dance floor. So let's just hop into it. This is Lizzie Jane and we are coming to you live from Regenerate with the one and only Namina. you're here you're stateside you just played regenerate fest how was the set how do you feel it was sick yeah i mean people were very receptive it's always nice like i feel like at festivals because like i'm a relatively small artist and i feel like it's always nice to see like people there's a certain circumference between like where i am and where the audience is and i don't know how big it is but i can see people who've come for me and people who are just at a festival yep and for whatever reason and i love it but for whatever reason the people who've come for me come straight to the front and like pack that area out and are singing like every lyric and i I fucking love that That isn't it crazy in this day and age where it's really difficult i just think i mean you're like my fifth interview of the day and we talked about this in every sit down is we're in this age of remixes and we're in this nostalgic age where like how can we get the viral moment and how can we like resample this old 60s, 70s, yeah, 80s, 90s, yeah, yeah. early 2000s acapella? Yeah. But to have original records where people actually know the lyrics Man, it's wild, yeah. is wild. It's wild. It's wild. It's wild. There's like some songs that, and like, unfortunately, the set today was only an hour and I only realized while i was on stage so i kind of like i re i re like structured you were like the reading whole thing. the crowd i was reading the crowd but i was kind of like because i prepared for like an hour 15 which is like the other festival i played had been hour 15 so i like switched things around and made it work but there's one tune that i play and it's been really interesting seeing how it's the first tune that i've made that i played out that from the time that i start playing it no one knows what it is because it's unreleased. And yeah. then by the time I finish it, everyone knows the lyrics and everyone's singing along. And it's kind of wild. like That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And getting to that, I don't know, getting that kind of song and seeing how people react to it and how people like relate to those lyrics. It's just, it's weird. Well, I think that's like the beautiful thing about music is like everyone's going to have a different take on what you release there's something so cool about putting a record out like into the world where you kind of release it and you just have to like let people interpret it in their own way have you done like eps and stuff like that so most of my releases have been eps i did one album um but like i felt the same way as what you're saying for so long in terms of like letting people interpret my songs how they want like all of my lyrics are very like muffled. It's not clear what I'm really saying or okay. what the singer's really saying. And I didn't share the lyrics to the songs for a lot of time because I kind of liked let, letting people interpret it however they wanted. That's so. And it was cool. Like, That's cool. Because a lot of people would ask me, is this what it's saying? And I'd be like, yeah, sure. Are you singing? In some of them, yeah. It's not uh, cool. I use my vocals too. So it's yeah, that's yeah. a very, it's the way that I feel Wait, like- sorry. To be clear, I'm singing, but- it's covered in effect. No, you're, it co- you're be like manipulating how it. The same yeah, manipulation yeah, yeah. is crazy. No, I do the same yeah. shit. Okay, I do. The, cool, I cool, have cool. some songs where I definitely sing organically, and it's like I could pick this up and sing, and you know it's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of songs, I'm like a singer songwriter through and through. So, so like a lot of where I'll start is like with an acoustic guitar with my piano, 
and then you chop everything you up and then you chop oh, and you resample sick. and you distort and you came oh, crash and you all those things and then it becomes this like melody and this like crazy thing yeah and that's really cool you have like a very sick we're starting to see more of the beat pads we're starting to see more of the live setups mm. you have a live setup so talk to me about the live setup. Is it is it difficult to tour with? Is it like a bridge that you had to cross at one point? Or has this always been a part of your project? So I started um, producing with Ableton Push, which is the pads that I have up Sick. there. But it was like, ideally, I'd fill it out and do, do more stuff on stage. But I just don't have the crew to like pull like keyboards and stuff around with me. Yeah. Um. So at the moment, it's I'm playing as much as I can on push, but DJing like the foundations of my tunes. So I'll DJ like the karaoke version and then play the synths or whatever the most important part of that song is. Are you MIDI mapping? That. What do you mean? Like in, in what sense? Ableton. Like, are you, are you... It's hard because I've never worked with the push. So it's hard for me to conceptualize what it sure. actually looks like. Are you setting different synths up on different channels where yeah. you're then you have like these different exports of like where you're really just performing those synths live? Yeah. So it will be like first song um, will be this synth on the first channel. Second song will be that. Yeah. It's all set up like in a very simple way because I know that I love I love dancing to my ch- I love listening to my tunes yeah. like not in like a big headed way I just really enjoy it. I would music. hope you enjoy the art that you're making. Well, yeah. <laughs> I would hope you enjoy it. Yeah, but then there's an element of like I want to be playing it, but also I know that I can't I can't restrict myself from wanting to like get involved. So there's so many things that can go wrong. Yeah. I feel yeah, if you sure. really strip everything down and you were to have different things looping and different pedals and different things. I just feel like every electronic live hybrid set that I've seen, it's like, what element do you like the most out of this that you feel like you yeah, can yeah. execute in a performative manner where you're not depending on someone else if something goes wrong? No, totally. Yeah. Totally. I mean, that's bang on. It's just a case of like trying to expand it from that is something that's going to take me a little while. But I want to do that. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's, it's a commitment. It's a commitment. And it's a slow process. And it's just like, it's just so much going on at the moment. And, but like it adds to the like longevity of your project. I feel like it's very cool when like you have fans that really grow with you. And then you kind of like yeah. reintroduce something or you introduce something new. And you go totally from, you know, you can play Larimer Lounge like you're playing later. And if you wanted to do just a DJ set, you can do just a DJ set. Yeah, and then yeah. for the festival sets, you have that live element. Like, for I sure. feel like the more complexity that you can add to your project, the more intrigued like listeners and fans are, which can be cool. You're right. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. So you said you have a lot going on right now. I feel like I've started to see your name like pop up in ways that I've just like never seen before. Sure. So tell me about like. How has it been coming stateside? You're now fully touring over here. Like, yeah, is yeah, it, yeah. is this been like a very crazy adjustment for you? Um, I don't know. I don't think it's been too much of an adjustment. I think that, that what's been weird is seeing how each state responds differently to each song. Yeah. And like, there's some, like initially I'd go in and I'd be like, okay, well, this is the one that everyone's going to love. And like I'd lose my mind. I'd be dancing like crazy on stage. And then I'd open my eyes and it's just like, not flat, but people would be like, this is cool. This is cool. This yep. is really cool. But like, so it's kind of adjusting to, I guess, like personally enjoying each song as much as I do and not really paying attention to the crowd. Mm-hmm. But then also at the same time, bearing in, I don't know, kind of appreciating when people love it. You know? Yes. Because, like, if I was to take in how each individual is feeling and, like, deep it properly, then I I think I'd struggle on stage. That would be difficult. That would be difficult. It's a lot of, like, it's a lot of, like, mind, mindset, really. It's always mindset. Because you can go in and every place and every crowd can be so different. Can be so different. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like... 
you're either committing to what you're doing is you or you're going to let the energy and like the crowd really influence you. Yeah. And that's like a give and take. There's a happy medium in that. Yeah, for sure. But there's sometimes there's sometimes where I love responding to the crowd and just doing what they want. Yeah. Um. But it's like it's. It, that's normally like with DJ sets when I can see that it's going a certain way and people are enjoying that. Yeah. And I just keep going that way. Um, yeah. I don't know. And DJing, you can really, you can really feed off a crowd when you don't have like yeah. a live routine and a set thing where you know what you're doing. You really play that back and forth game, which is yeah. super exciting. And like in your discography with you having such like an extensive catalog, what are some records that like you always play every set that you feel like really defines like your current sound? Like opening credits always. Um, the You Got the Love remix, which like. They're like, yes. It's been, yeah, it's, it's sick. It always goes crazy. It's always such a, it's always such a response that I get. But like the amount of times, the amount of time that I've held that song back unintentionally it's crazy. Like I've uh, initially when I made that song, it just went so so big on all social media, and I had no intention. I mean, I had no clue that it would go that way. Yeah. But the response was so massive, and like still, like every day, I get like five or six people asking. And it's like a year ago that I put this this video out, asking for for me to release that song, and I want to, but also. I can't. It's you got the love, you know. Yeah. Like, there's no way realistically that I'm gonna get the clearance for that. Hey, keep pushing. You never know. You We've never been pushing. know. We've been. Pushing. We. I know. I know. It's hard <laughs> when it's pushing. one of those records that are just like pinnacle yeah, points of, sure. of a song, and you have such a cool take on it, and everybody plays it, and everybody supports it, yeah. and you're like, this. There's no way in fucking hell. This. Is I happen. know. I know. Yeah. So it's it's like. So now we're at the point where like I've got. X amount of remixes of songs that I'm not going to get clearance for. And so I'm just releasing them on but SoundCloud. But that's the fun part about it. It's like, I think fans love that right now. Like having like the free bootlegs and the free remixes yeah. that they just like fuck with. It's and great. you're like, all right, this is cool. Honestly, and that SoundCloud era, I feel like is having a resurgence, like yeah. minimally. It's not what it totally. used to be. But, but I, I feel like, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. No, you're good. But I feel like it's, it's, much more like uh, driven by people who already know the artist. People aren't like going through their SoundCloud feed and checking out songs from like... Only DJs do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're fucking crazy. Yeah, and DJs. they're fucking crazy. <laughs> they're fucking crazy. I doubt. But then like people will go to a specific song that's been released on SoundCloud yeah. or like they'll be on SoundCloud for like one particular reason. But that's fine. If people can listen to the song, then like I'm happy it doesn't really matter yeah. how I put it out. No, I love that. And and I feel like, too, I'm always a big fan of, like, the suggested songs that are on the right-hand side. Like, yeah, I'll, find yeah, a, yeah. I'll go and I'll find a specific song and then I'll just let it ride. And I'm like, yeah. all right, this is sick. It's always cool hearing, like, the reimaginations of songs. Sure. And that's why I think, like, this nostalgic era and, like, people who are really, really, really into the resampling everything that we talked about whether it's coming from vinyl or an early 2000s sample that you would never dream to be cleared but you just put it out anyways hope for the best yeah. yeah it's it's wild people love it right now yeah people love it it's, it's true super exciting is there anything on the horizon that you're very excited about that you can tease for us um genuinely authentically excited about. yeah yeah yeah, yeah that, <laughs> that has the authenticity there you have to i say like i'm i'm excited about um so Signing to Ninja Tune was like Ninja Tune is phenomenal. Honestly, when it was like of any interest to them, I was like, "Are you sure?" Like me, like not in like a self conscious way. I was just like, "I don't see my music fitting as label." And then I was chatting to the team. We got along so well, and it kind of made sense. Um, Ninja Tune is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're the best. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, "Okay, sick." So I'm I'm gassed to release all of these tunes with them, and just like. I don't know, just see where this year goes. Like, I've got all of these songs that I know would go crazy, but a part of me is scared of teasing them or like playing them out because with you, the You Got the Love remix, it just got so out of my hands. And I feel like I kind of not disappointed a lot of people, but I let a lot of people 
are still like really like are hoping that they'll get it ASAP. And it's just not really in, in my control. There's so many things that are not going to be in your control. Yeah, and for you sure. have to there, but there are a lot of things that are in your control, and those are the things that you have to try and control. Yeah. Because there's going to be things like this where it's not happening how the fan base wants it to happen. But like, get a fucking SoundCloud account. Right. <laughs> like it's yeah. it's difficult. It's I I get that I get yeah. that, but that can't hinder you. But no, like to be clear, like the 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 real like the people who love my tunes they're fully understanding of the fact that I've got to hold off and like there's nothing I can yeah. really do about certain songs it's a good problem to have though oh to, uh, it's a great I'm problem not, to, to have honest, I'm not trying to complain yeah I'm more just saying like these are kind of barriers in the way of me progressing in the way that I would have wished that I could yeah. you know like if it was up to me I'd just chuck those shoes out immediately yeah um so there's songs that we're getting cleared but it takes a while. It takes a while. So lawyers involved, there's labels involved, there's a lot of people involved. Rough. And like I don't understand any of that shit. Like I'll oversee it all, but just kind of be like confused by most of it. Yeah. <laughs> so there's songs that I play during live sets and they go mad, but I can't tease them on socials because I'd be so scared that it would blow up and then I can I have to say, sorry guys, it's gonna be another year before you can actually listen to this in your headphones. Yeah. Which would be the worst. That's a it's a it's a good problem to have, but I also understand being strategic with those decisions to make sure that you're making sure that everyone who needs to that they're getting it at the right time. Yeah. That's crazy. I just don't want to be that guy who's like and just tease the fuck out of yeah, you. Yeah. 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 That'll be it. That'll be it. All right. So before we go, I'm gonna do a little speed round with you. All right. So if you could back to back with any DJ, who would it be? Uh, Taurus. Oh, okay. Okay. That's a great answer. If you're out there. Yeah. They hear it. They hear it. That's it. That's it. And then if you are traveling internationally, what is one item that you have to take with you that isn't music related? Not your push pad, not your USBs, not your headphones. What is one thing that you got to take with you? Uh, I don't know if it's that interesting, but like my... I take earplugs and eye mask everywhere I go because I can't sleep unless you need to sleep. It's Gotta do it. Completely like Gotta do shut it. out and I'm just. A I'll part. wear my custom earplugs on the plane to never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Oh, mate. So when I fly, you know what? Actually, when I fly, I have one of those like blow up pillows. Oh, like the neck pillows? No, no. That you sit forward and rest your head. That's genius. It's the I've done that so many times best. on the thing. I can. That's what, That's what I'm it's saying. That's what I'm saying. So fucked. I found this thing and I was like, okay, well, I, I hate leaning against the thing in front of me, getting no. my neck fucked up. And so you lean forwards into this like little... Damn, you know, that's the move. You know when you're on a massage table and you yeah. put your head there? Yeah. So you lean into that and then you can also put your phone in the middle, fall asleep, watching what? shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, yeah. fuego. Mate, it's elite. It's elite. And they have to Amazon. Yeah, Amazon I'll send it to Discovery. You. Yeah, I'll send, send it to you. me. Send it to me. All right. And then if you had to choose one of your favorite cities stateside, what would it be? States. Yeah, in the States. I can't do this. You can't do it. You can't do it. You're like, not yet. You're like, not yet. If okay, so tell me, tell me the difference between the crowds overseas and the crowds in the States. What's your takeaways? Um, I'd say in the UK, in the UK, they respond more to the like bootleg remixes okay. right and it's it's funny that you were saying like oh yeah people are loving these bootleg remixes like everywhere because i found that out here there's not so much people singing along and going crazy it's a lot more people like yeah i know this song yeah you know it's like hey which is nice <laughs> which is nice but it's it's very different in the uk it's just like everyone's singing along whereas over here i found that the original tunes go a little bit crazier and i love that yeah that's a hot take. That's a take I haven't gotten yet. That means that means your original tunes are good. <laughs> our our yeah. quality of our of quality. Well, this was sick. Thanks for joining me today. No, and to I'm glad you had a good time playing Regenerate Fest and you're gonna play the after party later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sick. Well, I'm excited to see the 
continued growth of the project. Congrats on the Ninja Tune signing. That's fucking huge. Thank you. And I'm excited to hear more music from you. So thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, guys. 